Welcome back to Houston Life on this Monday. We have meteorologist Justin Stapleton in as my co-host today. And what a perfect day to have you because, know. you know, I was visiting my dad in mm -hmm. Chicago over the weekend, so yeah. I missed it. I've only been able to see the video. Yeah. But the fireball? We had a good one last night as well. I did not see it either because obviously we were getting ready for the show. Yeah. I, mean, I was here last night at 10 o'clock, but I'm starting to see it pop on Twitter. And oh boy, look at some of these videos coming in here. Look at this court. Oh my gosh. Listen, it is just unbelievable. You're looking at the video. This thing was about the size of a Prius when it started out. Yes, the car. And it traveled across southeast Texas, landing near Marble Falls, near Austin. And um, let I think, Justin, you have the map now, right? Look I at do, that. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah, and, and this is the other part too. Look at this. There were 219 reports of this, basically from Dallas all the way down to San Antonio. Obviously, all the folks here in Houston that saw it, and even down towards Corpus Christi. I'll give you an idea of the type of size we were talking with that. And not only that, but the geometric impact point. We're going to learn a lot more on that. Really interesting, too, because you could see when it hit the atmosphere and it kind of popped and then just sort of worked its way through after that. But Courtney, it was pretty neat. It's certainly something I'm kind of mad that I missed it, that's for sure. Uh, but I do know that uh, space is only one part of meteorology we have to go to the experts on what happened with that as well that is right you're back now and there's a lot of questions of course about the fireball and we've called in our expert dr carolyn sumners from the houston museum of natural science it is always lovely to see you we're going to talk about your dress in a second <laughs> but great. explain this how does a fireball form and the, the fireball is really the correct term right well, or we start, we start out with a meteoroid. Okay. Meteoroids are out in space. They're not on the earth. They're not in the atmosphere. They're just out there. Then when the meteoroid gets into the atmosphere, it becomes a meteor. And then when the meteor burns up and fireballs and all the funny thing it does, if it makes it to the ground, it's a meteorite. You're right. That's right. That's right. Okay. And that's why I brought a few meteorites along, too. Now, would we be able, uh, at this point, we don't know if anybody has found anything, but uh, over the next well, couple of days, or well, we do you think kinda, we're going to see something? We kind of use the rule, if you hear it, and it did break the sound barrier, yeah. apparently, mm -hmm. and you know, the flash was quite impressive, it's possible it's in your front yard. <laughs> mm. Wow. You know, but it, but it, you have to look for it. It's going to look different. Okay, uh, this I is kind of what so we're So there could for. be pieces mm -hmm. of it all around that area, it, it, Chances are, I don't know, if it, because it wasn't that big, but the, it has a little fusion crust. Oh, they're going to hate us for doing this. It has a fusion crust on it, perhaps, if it just came down. Now, what's cool about this one is that this meteor has little white spots in it. Okay. Which you might get. It's a carbonaceous chondrite. And the little white spots actually are older than the Earth. Oh in fact, oh they're gosh. older than the solar system. That is the oldest thing you've ever held in your hand. It was made by the supernova that created the pressure wave that gonna, created yeah. the solar system. Wow. Look at so that. that's how we like the meteorites. So if you have maybe a, a camera that you haven't looked at recently that was aimed west, mm -hmm. really, if you're in Houston, Look at that video, just in case it's on it. Yeah. About 10, 45 to 10 to 11, 15. I say, look in there, see if you've got a copy of it, because mm -hmm. we can use every, now that we want to find a piece, and we mm -hmm. may not find any. And the pieces are going to be small. They're going to be like this yeah, little one tiny. here. Yeah, tiny. Right. They're going to be tiny. But if we can find them, one piece might have come from Mars. Maybe from the moon. Hmm. These uh, these meteorites are just wonderful things. Yeah. So the question I have with this is, is that you know we get sort of pelted by things atmospherically. Yes. A lot, but a lot of it I always liken it as uh, throwing an M and M at your windshield. It'll just <laughs> kind of bounce right off, right? The, the atmosphere. But this one looked like it. It was like a rock if you're driving on the highway, and it really. It made was the size of a small car. Okay. And when it came in, but mm -hmm. it's going to burn up. We know it. It's sort of exploded in yeah. the fireball. We know it was going faster than the speed of sound mm -hmm. if they heard a sonic boom. Now, if you saw it way over there, it's not in your backyard. Right. Okay, it has to right. come over your head. Right. Or be very close to it to, to have landed near you. But we do go like meteorite hunting if we have if we think we've got enough vision. That's why it's so important for someone to see it and also to tell us which direction they were facing. Gotcha. When they made the video. And then we that's how we invented the hook 'em horns. Because they people would tell me these crazy stories about how big their meteorite was or where it was going. I said, yeah. was, "How many hookums wide was the trail?" Oh, okay, <laughs> you know? I like it. And then, and then we found out people couldn't do that, and so we said, "Okay, how big was it in gigums?" <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Got to include everybody. So oh, yeah, we sure. don't know exactly where it came from, and we, would we ever be able to figure it out? It, it, rarely, but yes, sometimes we know any any meteorite that came from the asteroid Vesta 
it had a big impact, it had a big collision in the asteroid Vesta. We can detect it by what it's made of. If the meteorite was knocked off Mars, we can detect it. If it was knocked off the moon, we can detect it. Otherwise, we just have this, like this one here, we just know it's really, really old. Hmm. And this one fell in Mexico in 1970. Okay. Wow. So, but that, the idea that the meteorites tell us so much about our own Earth. Dr. Amazing. Carolyn Sumner, yes. it's always great to catch up with you. Thank, Thank you, you so much for coming in and sharing all the knowledge. We do appreciate it. Okay.